I want to listen to this tape, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. All How's right. that? Because I have some very definite thoughts about this. I saw the performance. <laughs> I think it was a performance. I'm right. sure he rehearsed and rehearsed. All right, you ready? Here he is, Michael Jackson. I didn't do nothing. I didn't touch nobody. <laughs> I didn't hear you hit a tape machine. Oh. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? <laughs> As you may already know, after my tour ended, I remain out of the country undergoing treatment for a dependency on... You know, when you're sitting there denying having sex with little boys, you should try to talk like a man. Yeah. Uh, as you know... Because uh, <laughs> I'm saying to myself, what does he sound like? <laughs> Sounds like a child molester. Pain medication. This medication was initially prescribed to see the excruciating pain that I was suffering after recent reconstructive surgery on my scalp. There have been many disgusting <laughs> statements made recently concerning allegations of improper conduct on my part. Conduct. Well, in one minute you're sitting on top of the world, the next thing you're <laughs> trying to defend yourself. You're trying to get it off you. Yeah. <laughs> Why is everyone paying attention to me now? It was fine a year ago. Not I now. I begging for this kind of publicity. Now I'm looking for a little privacy. I had to even go sit and talk to Oprah yeah. to get some attention. Now I'm getting too much attention. <laughs> These statements about me are totally false. As I have maintained from the very beginning, I am hoping for a speedy end to this horrifying, horrifying experience to which I have been subjected. I shall not in this statement respond to all of the false allegations being made against me, since my lawyers have advised me that this is not the proper forum in which to do that. I will say that I am particularly upset by the handling of this mass matter by the incredible, terrible mass media. This mass matter. By the incredibly terrible mass media. Yes. How come the mass media was okay when they were kissing your ass? Well, that's what always boggles my mind when uh. these guys come forward and they're upset with the news media. With this mass media. This mass mess by this mass media. Yeah, he kind of messed up. <laughs> Mass mess. <laughs> he, he covered it pretty good though. This mass mess with the mass media. <laughs> this massive country ours. The mass, the mass. But you see our special New Year's Eve. The first three minutes is Michael I Jackson. I hope you left the makeup off your nose so it's brown. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. The tip of his nose was brown. Don't worry, it's completely authentic. In fact, you're going to be shocked when you see it. Yeah. I want the first time you see it should be New Year's Eve because you're going to be shocked. I want the expression on your face when you see it. I look exactly <laughs> like Michael Jackson. <laughs> all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Like, when Don't is that happening? Like yeah, when are we going to hear the truth? <laughs> what do you mean? You mean you're going to tell your, your angle and the kid's going to tell his? <laughs> as soon as he makes it up. <laughs> Criminal. So I am innocent. I have been forced <laughs> to submit to a dehumanizing and humiliating examination by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff Department and the Los Angeles Police Department earlier this week. I like what he says. I am not a criminal. A criminal. <laughs> Wait a second. A criminal. I am not a criminal. Like, dude, with all your money. Wait, don't condemn me. Don't condemn, condemn me. me. I am not a criminal. <laughs> I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal. So I am innocent. <laughs> I have been forced to submit to a dehumanizing and humiliating examination by the Santa Barbara County Sheriff Department and the Los Angeles Police Department earlier this week. Duh. So what do you think was going to happen? They served a search warrant on me which allowed them to view and photograph my body, including my penis. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know you had one, Michael. How soon are we going to get those photos? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a party to me. They photographed my penis. <laughs> <laughs> a search warrant on me which allowed them to view and photograph my body including my penis my buttocks my lower torso thigh yeah, that's usually where you find your penis and your buttocks and your lower torso no, they try to keep that out of it when they're looking at your penis there was a time to photograph my penis my lower buttocks my <laughs> upper and outer buttocks yeah. and still they weren't through <laughs> and any other error that they wanted error they were supposedly looking for any discoloration, Error. spotting, blotches, or other evidence of a skin color disorder called vitiligo, no. which I have previously spoken about. The warrant also directed me to cooperate in any examination of my body by their physician to determine the condition of my skin, including whether I have vitiligo or any other skin disorder. It was terrible. They did a full gynecological exam on her. On him. Him. Whatever. <laughs> the warrant further stated that I had no right to refuse the examination or photographs. 
And if I failed to cooperate with them, they would introduce that refusal at any trial as an indication of my guilt. It was the most humiliating ordeal of my life. It's got to be when you're a big star and guys are photograph like just like cops are photographing your. Well, penis. you know they're all talking about it today in a yeah. bar. Somewhere. Oh, it must be great. That's what's killed him. <laughs> yeah, he had a pretty good body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got some of the pictures. <laughs> Boy, tell me every one of those cops at the body photo session isn't chomping at the bit to go to the tabloids. <laughs> my day with Michael. My day with Michael, right? I was the cop who photographed him. Let me take a break. We'll finish this very exciting announcement. <laughs> What I sort of like about this Michael Jackson thing is uh, when he came on, the, the anchor guy goes, and now live from Neverland Ranch, <laughs> Neverland. Yeah, so you know you're going to get the truth. <laughs> Neverland. You're coming from a fairy tale place. It's good. You're denying child molestation and you're like, live from Never Neverland. <laughs> say no more. Yeah, say no more. Guilty. Good night. <laughs> Goodbye. Lock him up. Check, please. <laughs> Why, it's Captain Hook. Hey, matey. <laughs> I didn't rape the boy. The lost boys. It was weird. It was weird too. Like whoever shot it, were they trying to make it look like one of those guys who was in a POW camp? Like I mean, it was like one camera, and it was. It looked like it was like an empty room, and yeah, it looked like he was already in jail. I know. Yeah, I mean, didn't it? Didn't it look like he was talking to you from prison? <laughs> I guess it was to look like the common man. You know what I mean? Like you, know, you don't want to be in some elaborate room somewhere. Yeah, we don't want to be in some ornate palace. And now live from the Never Neverland Ranch. <laughs> Here he is. And why not Queersville? Oh. Live from Queersville. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it just it, change the name of that place. Live from a strange place where anything can happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm not saying the guy's a queer. I'm not saying he's gay. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying he's odd. But you know, when the perception of the public was that he was gay, a lot of people thought that because of the feminine voice and stuff. You don't have to call yourself Never Neverland. <laughs> well, he hasn't thought this thing out completely anyway. Camera work wasn't too good. Did you see those lashes on him? Yeah. Oh. Helen Stern doesn't wear. You'll see New Year's Eve when I'm a woman. My lashes, I got fake eyelashes. But man, I never saw eyelashes like that. <laughs> I'm watching the camera work. I said, what is a six-year-old working the camera? Did you <laughs> one see of the it? Kids. Yeah, one of the kids. Hey, move the camera over there. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? Don't you know how to work a camera? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm under a lot of pressure. <laughs> it was frightening, though. He really well, was. Well, he certainly didn't do himself any favor with the way he looked yesterday. He only looked more bizarre. <laughs> yeah, you know. He, he looked. Maybe it's better you don't go before the public. I was reading uh, David Hinckley's column in the Daily News. He said... Uh, you know, in Thriller, he was supposed to be, like, really scary and stuff. Uh -huh. he said, this was much scarier. Yeah. Why do you use that other makeup? <laughs> mm. <laughs> One that no person should ever have to suffer. And even after experiencing the indignity of this search, the parties involved were still not satisfied and wanted to take even more pictures. Mm. It was a nightmare. A horrifying nightmare. Mm. But if this is what I have to endure to prove my innocence, my complete innocence. How do you get his eyelashes that long? Is those fake eyelashes? Of course. They gotta be. Wow. That's weird. <laughs> I know of all like, the things This that... is the oddest makeup. Obviously, he's had a makeup job. Mm -hmm. But what an odd makeup job to choose for this particular day. He does look like a guy who's like trapped inside a mask of some kind. Mm-hmm. So be it. Throughout my life, I have only tried to help thousands upon thousands of children. Hep. I've only tried to help. I'm helping you. To live happy lives. It brings tears to my eyes when I see any child who suffers. I am not guilty of these allegations. But if I am guilty of anything, it is of giving all that I have, all that I have to give to help children all over the world. It is of loving children of all ages and races. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> We're talking about loving Is children. Is this a defense? I love children. <laughs> I love them all don't, over the world. Don't take me away from the children of all <laughs> places and races and all over the world. I love children. I love them. I love them so much. I like to travel with them. I love them in the east. I love them in the west. I love them bottom. I love them high up. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know who constructed this whole thing. <laughs> I love them. God love. It is of gaining sheer joy 
from seeing children with their innocent and smiling faces. <laughs> it is of enjoying through them the childhood that I missed myself. You know, it's getting a little old. Yeah, enough already. Yeah, with his childhood that he missed. I mean, come on. Who man. did have a childhood? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, act like I'm having a picnic over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I say grown up on stage ain't that bad. No. Being pandered yeah. to. Look at what he's got for that childhood. Right. You got a couple of million in the Never Never Land. I'd ranch. sell him mine. Yeah. <laughs> What's this? I had no childhood. Oh, because he was a performer? He had a child. He had a damn good childhood. That was his childhood. Yeah. He just doesn't want to accept it. <laughs> I don't like that childhood. <laughs> I like your childhood better. And what's so uh, normal about the childhood he's introducing these other children to? Just forget molestation. Mm -hmm. You know, going into Tories R Us with the doors closed and you get to run around. Who I has like a childhood like that? Please, please. I mean, nothing bad. I don't want to rob them of their childhood. I just want to make it better. Please. <laughs> Please, please. Words, please. Please. <laughs> if I am guilty of anything, it is of believing what God said about children. Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. In no way do I think that I am God. What does that but mean? But I do try to... Who knows? When people start <laughs> quoting from the Bible, I tune out. What the heck does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. Let me think about it. I was in the priesthood for like two years, so <laughs> if anyone can do this, I can. Tell me. Yeah. I was up there. They threw me out. I was making love to other guys. <laughs> and all over the world. It is of loving children of all ages and races. It is of gaining sheer joy mm. from seeing... Oh, such joy. Oh, ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> I have an ecstasy watching these children with their joy. <laughs> I want to expand their little world. <laughs> I want to give their parents some money. <laughs> so they won't have childhoods either. <laughs> yeah. Innocent and smiling faces. It is of enjoying through them the childhood that I missed myself. If I am guilty of anything, it is of believing what God said about children. Right, here we go. Right. Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Hold it. Give me some thinking, music. <laughs> Suffer little children come unto me. What was after that? Suffer the little children to come unto me. Come after me. <laughs> come under me. Come unto me. <laughs> I think it means I'll give you some chocolates if you kiss me. <laughs> I'll take you to Toys R Us. In no way do I think that I am God, but I do try to be God-like in my heart. Oh, I am. Mm. Suffer the little children to come under me to just substitute Michael. <laughs> Suffer the little children to come under Michael. <laughs> because to forbid them would be to deny them the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a Nambla meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Don't despair. Don't despair. <laughs> Times will change. <laughs> oh. Be proud to come to Neverland. <laughs> totally innocent of any wrongdoing and i know these terrible allegations will all be proven false again <laughs> to my friends and fans thank you very much for all of your support together we will see this through to the very end i love you very much and may god bless you all <laughs> you. goodbye I'm surprised you didn't say like and also uh do i have some time left on the satellite also uh latoya you suck <laughs> Surprised he didn't uh, come down on her. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, it doesn't look good for Michael Jackson. My 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 point is that uh, that television um, has to. Unfortunately, you know, the sad thing is that all child molesters deny. Well, so not he, only not if only he is, he's right. In well, I don't know. Not even child molesters, but but everyone denies. <laughs> President Clinton yesterday, I know you have tape coming up of him next. I'm anxious to hear it because well, he, he wasn't even very good at his denial. He didn't <laughs> practice. And the point is, you should just say, look. I did it. I did it, and so who so cares? Me. Yeah, I'm a man, and I have my weaknesses, and I, I'm the president, yes, but the president is a human have being. Have you seen the women throwing themselves at me? <laughs> yeah, look at me. <laughs> Sometimes I have to catch. <laughs> so is there any chance Michael Jackson's innocent? Who knows? Uh, look, that's for the court to decide, but uh, it doesn't look good. And also, when you choose to go on TV... To defend yourself. You must... Well, you know let how... Me just, uh, okay, let me just uh, say this. Go ahead. If you choose to go on TV and defend yourself, you, you have to know what you're doing. 
you know, what, what was once innocent and charming in your videos isn't necessarily going to fly when you're sitting there, one-on-one -on -one of the camera, staring into it and uh, professing innocence. It, it looked bizarre. He looked bizarre. Well, to me or you, yeah. he would have to stop all that acting. Give me a real voice. Yeah, right. Get, you stand know. up straight. Stop the sniveling. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, show me that you really care. <laughs> Say, listen, you know I've been talking like this. This, this is my real voice. Yeah, right, Dana. Well, <laughs> so not only... It's <laughs> what was that? Scott not setting up the harmonizer. I said, L L "Here's my real voice." Hello. <laughs> yeah. uh, look, I didn't do anything with these guys. I'm a guy who dated Brooke Shields. I don't want to talk about it. All right. <laughs> and that is my last statement from Never Never Land. I understand that uh, that you know reporters were saying yesterday that. The search of his body mm -hmm. went on on Monday at the Neverland Ranch. And it finished on Wednesday. <laughs> oh. And they said he was a complete mess during the search. Mm -hmm. You know, apparently he lost it, was uh, out of control, not able to cooperate. Well, according to all these young boys, uh, he has been nude. Even the ones that say he's innocent of any uh, touching. He's been nude in front of them many, many times. So you have they? a young boy saying he was nude? Oh, yeah. there was a. Uh, wasn't there the kid who said, hey, look, Michael Jackson never laid a hand on me, but uh, we shared a bed together? He said he was fully dressed. Oh, he was? He yes. was in his jammies? Mm -hmm. oh, I see. Or something. Well, only he was a gentleman. Slept in his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I stand corrected. <laughs> but uh, next time you go on TV, don't look so weird with that, that whole look and the affect and the voice. Get in there and the use hair, your... The hair, the lashes. <laughs> get in there like a man and say, look, I didn't do anything wrong. Now I'm going to go smoke a cigar and play some pool. I'll get the hell out of my house. That's your re that, now that you can respect, right? <laughs> All right. So if Mr. Jackson wants closure, let's start the trial sooner than later. Mm, mm. There's an interesting point. Tough words. And the black community, I think they would be saying, bring the noise. That's it. Bring the noise. <laughs> well, good for you, Robin. Have you been on, on the street? I've been uh, studying black what culture. What was that? What'd you say? I didn't understand. Bring the noise. That's uh, bring on the action. That's a black terminology. <laughs> All right. Very good. Jackie's shocked. Jackie hasn't seen a black guy in years. Except <laughs> the guy buys his pot from. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> Mr. Feldman also says that uh, this little boy can't hold a press conference. I believe in trying this case in the court, and if Mr. Jackson's camp really believed in trying this case in court, uh, they wouldn't have asked for a six-year stay. Mr. Jackson has refused to answer any questions under oath on the basis that his constitutional rights would be protected, so they are not forthcoming. They are silent, and they just want sympathy. Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Joke how, man? how does anybody have the nerve to say, could we just not talk about this for six years? <laughs> yeah, that is a wild. If he loves children. Yeah. yeah. Let's clear it up. Let's let all the, my victims grow up first. I have a good idea. <laughs> Let's not do anything for six years. The kids will be older and wiser and the statute of limitations. And, and less likely to remember. <laughs> and who knows? I could get hit by a bus six years. <laughs> and make I could make tons more money. I have right. an idea. Let's, let's pretend nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I call it Never Never Land. I don't want to talk about it. That's where you never make any sense. <laughs> and now Michael Jackson's attorney wants everyone to know that Michael made this statement uh, on his own. He wrote it himself. He did bring it to his lawyers to ask him if everything in it was all right. Right. And uh, they think he made a good appearance for himself yesterday. <laughs> he's back. He's strong. He's healthy. He's innocent. And he is going to vigorously and aggressively defend these charges and prevail. And he's going to make it after all. <laughs> he's back. He's strong. Who are we talking about? I don't Michael. know. Pretty wild. Yeah, it's a strange case and i'm sure it'll last right into 1994 well it's one thing fun. one thing's for sure he didn't molest anyone during the whole press announcement <laughs> that we, we know have, we know there are tons of witnesses <laughs> kept my pants on the whole time but did you see his hands the whole time no i did not uh, see his hands so anything could have been going on <laughs> meanwhile i understand that the um, archdiocese <laughs> of the state of new mexico is moving to neverland <laughs> they might as well <laughs> it's a good place because you'll never land in jail if you're there you know, you say you wouldn't go to a female doctor, but look at this. Three-quarters of female doctors surveyed in Canada say they've been sexually harassed by their patients. 
Well, when she's got your pants down and she's fondling you, it's <laughs> kind of hard to keep your mind on business. <laughs> hey, Doc, eat me. Oh, Let's be blunt. So they say alcohol and drugs may have something to do with this. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Usually the female doctors are treated as women and not physicians by many of their male patients. Duh. <laughs> Stop it. I've yet to see a doctor that turned me on a female doctor. You don't see many good looking female doctors, let's be honest. Oh, they do happen though. Really? Oh yeah. Well give me a name. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed. Imagine I look, Oh, my God. I'd make her be naked with me. Well, you don't have to show that at every examination, you know. I know. I'm getting suspicious of my doctor. Uh, <laughs> I go to get my... Look. Yeah, I only get, get my throat checked. The guy goes, pull in your pants. Uh, uh, uh. That's why I can't stand doctors. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I just see a, an application for a job here. Yeah. There's a tribe in the Amazon that oh, yeah. their uh, last surviving warrior was killed by a panther. Yeah. And they need a white man, like, you know, the man called Horse or that uh, Kevin Costner in Dances with Wolves. They need a white man to come, learn their culture, marry their women, and repopulate the tribe. I guess that leaves Gilbert out. They need a white man. <laughs> We're not sure what he is. But, uh... Well, Gilbert's white. We're not, not sure if he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> or if he's capable of doing this job. Gilbert looks like a convict. Have you ever had children? <laughs> but you're saying that, in other words, there's an African tribe. No, an, uh, uh, an Indian tribe down in the Amazon. Why do they need a white man? I... Well, see, they could marry the little 14-year-old girl, girl off to another Indian tribe. But then they'll take her and make her learn their ways. Oh, and 14? she won't be carrying on the traditions of this tribe. <laughs> they figure whites who have no culture. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're so attached to. If a white man is willing to move down there, right. impregnate their 14-year-old. Marry the 14-year-old and repopulate the tribe. So I figure they're, they're willing to give them the other mm. women who are capable of childbirth She's 14. Well. Jerry Seinfeld will take her. Jerry Seinfeld just called in. He might want to <laughs> look her over. His hey. hand is raised high. How? Oh. How, oh, hey. Chief? How? Oh. Hey, Kimasabi. Hey. Who's got the 14-year-old? Hey. I'm ready to learn your ways. Take off your clothes and do a rain dance on me. <laughs> Shoshana Lonstein's 18. She's getting too old. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on. See, I sing Indian songs. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hand me the drum. <laughs> Who are these oh, whoa, 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 What does oh, whoa, whoa mean? So anyway, the, uh, that sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. I would do that. Why? I yeah. mean, there should be people lined up for this job, don't you think? Do you know how many losers there are who would love to go down and have sex with a 14-year-old? Believe and me. They'll, they'll treat you well, too. <laughs> right. Oh, that's fantastic. So how do you, how do you apply? I don't know how to apply. <laughs> I was watching you, Gilbert, on Up All Night. Yeah. That was good. someone does. Where you were on, uh, well, they were showing my favorite movie, that Patrick Dempsey movie. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. Even though you were goofing on it. Yeah, and they cut out nudity in all these. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They cut out nudity and they cut out some curse words. Was yeah. there nudity in that one? Not really, but they had a lot of curse words that they cover up. Because it's Channel 17. Meanwhile, it's cable. They could, they could throw in a few curse words. It's a late Saturday night. But, um... It was very embarrassing. I tuned in, and Gilbert was at some party, and people there actually trapped him under a tree. And I think it was reality. I don't think, yeah. it, was, I think it was a bit. <laughs> he didn't plan that. Yeah. He was under the tree the whole time. It's from my autobiography. It was good, though. <laughs> God, the richer you get, Gilbert, yes. the worse you look. <laughs> <laughs> and judging by how you look today, you're worth about $10 million. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Doesn't he look he's terrible? really rich. He looks, he's really rolling. <laughs> Although my wife looked at Gilbert on Up All Night a Saturday night and said, boy, Gilbert looks handsome. I really? Said, yeah, I said, that, it must be weird lighting. <laughs> <laughs> she was drinking. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Gilbert, what are you promoting today? Not a hell of a lot. Oh, really? You're yeah. not even pushing anything? Not a hell of a lot. Just here to say yeah. Happy New Year? I'm just here to say hello. By the way, people will be happy to know. People said, will Gilbert be part of your New Year show? I said, absolutely not. So you can feel free. <laughs> it's safe. It's safe. He will not be so there to annoy anyone. Descriptions would go up like triple now. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Now everyone's calling their cable company. <laughs> On New Year's, they're showing my Conan O'Brien spot. Are they? Yeah. Oh. That was one of my strongest. Really? Yeah. One yeah. of his strongest. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a setup. I don't know, and man. End up all night. 
Conan O'Brien, it's like, if you go on that show now, I think it means you're a loser. Are you really on television? Yeah, are you really on television? And Because you know, no one, I think, in Hollywood, anybody, you know, Gilbert will go on there because yeah. he goes on every show. <laughs> but I'm saying no one in Hollywood will book their people on Conan right, O'Brien. So it really means you, it's almost like doing the Joe Franklin show right. at this point. It is. <laughs> it's you the new the, Joe Franklin. Because Billy, Billy West was on the other uh -huh. night. Billy West is the voice of Ren and Stampy, and he works on our show occasionally. I never see him anymore. He's a big <laughs> shot now. But uh, Billy West was on. And there were guys sitting next to him. I never, I don't know who you don't it was. You don't know who they were. It looked like the Joe Franklin show. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy was the biggest star they had there. And, you know, I was excited because I know Billy, but I don't know how much the audience got into it. <laughs> but Billy was real good. Mm -hmm. He basically just did a whole bunch of those stupid Yeah, verses. I keep hearing about these great performances people are doing on the Conan O'Brien show, but nobody sees them. Well, what's neat about it is Conan is such a, a puppet that you can literally just go on there and do whatever you and want. take over the show. Without interruption. He doesn't even know how to interrupt you. Yeah, what I went on. Do? Yeah, it was my I I didn't let him speak. I went on did a whole thing. It was one of my strongest sets. <laughs> I say to people, I go, "So did you see that?" And they go, "No, when's it going to air?" Yeah, I know. That's the worst. You, when you is that on? So yeah. it'll be New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's New Year's, and then there's also up all night. So I'll be on opposite myself. Good. I don't know which I'll watch. Now we're going to be working New Year's Eve, of course. We'll be our, watching an infomercial, probably. You'll probably be watching our show because you're so horny. Yeah, <laughs> so. Uh, you're an expert on comedy, Gilbert. I, I oh, consider yes. you to be an expert. Okay. Is there a funny bone anywhere in Conan's whole body? Is there anything <laughs> funny about that guy? Did you like? Did you talk to him backstage and stuff? No, I didn't actually get a chance to speak to him. <laughs> I tried to speak to... Masha Brady was on. Oh, was she? Guys. She's nice. Yeah. yeah, she's cute, and she was talking about contraception. Oh, really? That's what she does. She goes from show to show and talks about contraception. Marsha Brady. Yeah, from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Maureen McCormick. So did you get anything off her? Oh, yeah. yeah. A couple of condoms. Yeah. Yeah, I was nailing our backstage. Yeah. Gilbert likes to do some of the female guests before he does that to relax. He's such a stud. Yeah. Gilbert was on and no one missed Conan. <laughs> they didn't even know he was gone. Conan. Conan. Did you call him Conan? Oh, yes. That's his name, huh? Call Conan. Mr. O'Brien. Conan. <laughs> God, he's lame. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he went on there, and what did you talk about? Uh, nothing in particular. Just, like, goofed on him yeah, and stuff? Yeah, like here. I just did you ramb goof on him? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I just rambled on, and then... And who's that fat jackass who's a sidekick? <laughs> 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 Who is that guy? Did you know him before? Yeah. What, that's his name, Fat Jackass? Fat Jackass. I would call him Fat Jackass. I go, and here's my sidekick, hey, Fat Jackass. Jack hey, you Fat Jackass, <laughs> how you doing? Know? <laughs> 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 who's that guy? Why is he there? I mean, I don't even get why he's there. I mean, I could almost get why Ed McMahon was there. I don't know why Conan is there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they should just have no host on the show. Just have, like, Gilbert come out and do 10 minutes and cut him off. Yeah. They just found the only guy in America there. that makes Conan look good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, you want to do some news since Gilbert has nothing to promote? Sure. Yeah. I can't believe I, you're I not here that. with a date. I think. know. Maybe someone will call later. I didn't think I had any dates coming up. You don't have any, anything coming not up? Not that I know of. Maybe my agent will call later. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert always comes in and then halfway through the appearance we find that he has a bunch of dates. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know why he's here. He's just here to, because he has a good time on the show. All right. Gilbert needs to be in the public eye. <laughs> Someone oh, in the... Uh, between this and Conan O'Brien. Yeah, all right. We're going to do some news, Gilbert. You're good with this. Yes, okay. All right. Someone in the Washington Times. Well, now we're going to play our game. Thought you were very good on the Jay Leno show, Howard. Oh, yeah? What'd they say? Mr. Stern, incidentally, recently was on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno to plug the, uh, the extravaganza. You know, of course, they're talking about... Pay-per-view. Pay ...promotion. Yeah. And they say, oddly, Mr. Stern, notorious uh, mean streak, was somewhat subdued. Not to say he wasn't outrageous, but his demeanor was much more affable, almost, but not quite charming, and never funnier. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good appearance. Unlike uh, Gilbert's appearance, people saw him on. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert plays it safe. He goes on shows no one sees and says how great he was. Hey, that's a tryout. Gilbert's trying out the material. No one in the Washington Times writing about Gilbert's Conan appearance. <laughs> and he did some of his best stuff. I also did a Herman's Head to add to my list of shows. Hey, you know who called me at home? Uh-oh. You'll like this. Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, my God. He called me to tell me how good I was on Leno. And uh, he says, I mean, like, just out of the clear blue for no apparent reason. Yeah. Like, he wasn't looking for anything. And uh huh. He was just like the nicest guy. He, do you know him? Uh, vaguely. Yeah, I mean, he just said, you know, too few people ever call each other and, and congratulate them, but I thought, you know, it was uh, a genius appearance. And He wants something. No, he didn't <laughs> want anything. <laughs> Gilbert can smell it. Yeah. Well, I guess you're right. He borrowed $350. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, can I get on your show now? <laughs> no, it's a great appearance. Come on. I need an appearance somewhere. <laughs> Come on, let me walk on. I'll say hello. I'll do three lines. You no, know, Rodney even said, like, Rodney doesn't even have to work anymore. He made enough money. Oh, he yeah. You know, he doesn't do anything anymore. And he just said, I don't, you know, he says, my ego isn't so big that I can't make this call. And uh, he was Gilbert like, has never made a call. <laughs> no, Gilbert. Gilbert's ego is so big he can't bear Gilbert's to call anyone. Gilbert's ego is out of control. Yeah, I never once heard from Gilbert after I did a Jay Leno appearance. <laughs> uh, hello. Oh, this was Gilbert. Uh, uh, really appearance was <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, hi, it's Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really not too big sure to make I, this uh, call. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rodney was telling me he left uh, stand-up comedy pretty much. He just went into suing people full time. <laughs> <laughs> he's living from suit to suit. Oh, yeah. He's got like three or four filed right now. <laughs> but it was like the nicest call I ever got from anybody. And it was like we talked for a couple of minutes. And then he said like he got a call early in his career from Jack Benny. Uh-huh. And Jack Benny was his hero. So when Jack Benny called, he didn't know what to say. And then Jack Benny invited him to dinner. And Rodney said, oh, I'm busy that day. He didn't go because he was like, what am I going to say to Jack Benny oh at dinner? Oh, my God. Yeah. He was afraid he wouldn't be able to talk or something. Yeah. But then Rodney didn't invite me to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Do you ever do that? Do you ever get calls did, from the community? Did I ever invite anyone to dinner? No. Did you ever, I know you've been invited to dinner. <laughs> Gilbert's so cheap. He's so infamously cheap, he would never invite anyone no, to dinner. No, of course not. Uh, could you buy me some pajamas? Uh, uh, I, I need have. a thermometer. Could, could, uh, could you get me an English muffin? <laughs> <laughs> did you um, did you ever get a call from a, another comedian saying, hey, I thought you did a good job? Seriously. No, no one of any importance. Really? Uh, Belger has called me a few times. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, big deal. Well, what, what did That's he want? It. He's looking for something. What did he want? A testicle, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> testicle transplant. Yeah. He asked if I had one to spare. <laughs> well, now that you've uh, made Gilbert totally jealous by reading my positive yes, review. Yes, in that... I always like to do that when Gilbert's here. Yeah. Well, don't feel bad, Gilbert. That's a Mooney newspaper. <laughs> 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 but when you crack that group, you know you're really making it. Yeah. Nipsey Mooney. Russell called me up about my Conan appearance. <laughs> the Mooney's only write nice stuff about Reverend Sun Young Moon. <laughs> That's right. So I feel very compliment. That's very nice. Who is the reporter there? Uh, I don't know because I Chiang don't know facts. And I don't know exactly. The huh. name of the column is Radio Waves. Well, that's very nice. I appreciate that. So whoever writes that. Very, very rarely is anything nice said about me. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Clinton, he's looking for some nice things to be said about him. You know what? I'm going to make my prediction um, about Bill first Clinton. First of all, I was going to ask you today, do you think that in 1994 he will self-destruct? Because this certainly isn't an auspicious beginning to the year for him. No, I'm going to tell you, he's done a couple of smart things. First of all, right off the bat, uh, I'm going to tell you this. He admitted that he had a bad marriage. He admitted it in so many ways. He didn't come out and just say, hey, I have a horrible marriage. He basically said, listen, <laughs> I can't stand her. He is not physically attracted. He does not have a love relationship with his wife. I think there, this is a partnership of, of a kind. She wants to be in the White House. He wants to be in the White House. Very competent woman. And the two of them are running the country together. I believe that this sexual stuff is all oh so much garbage. You know, we're all interested in the private lives of our leaders. of our leaders. Yes. I mean, uh, I think he's going to have to avoid this whole uh, family values issue. Well, you know, the other day I was watching the the weekend review on CNN. Right, I watched it too Sunday and night. You, and you, yeah, yeah. And you saw them up in the balcony of that church singing. Yeah, yeah. It looks it looks tacky. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> don't do things like that. Yeah. So I, you know, I think that basically we all understand that, and I think this stuff will blow over. I think over. these, yeah, I think yeah. these troopers coming out of the woodwork all of a sudden. Well, you know, the tabloid shows have picked up on it again tonight. One of them will be uh, airing the views of of a man who says he lived next door to Jennifer Flowers and knows that there was sex going on between Bill and she blew Clinton over and Jennifer Flowers because he could hear them through the wall. Yeah. Well, no one doubts it. And this Jennifer Flowers, I don't know what her agenda is with Bill And Clinton. now she's upset. Uh, there's an article She has a big, out. hairy agenda. It's yes. Star Magazine, where she's now upset with Bill Clinton because now she realizes he was cheating on her while she, he was cheating on his wife as well. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so, she's very upset. Look, the man has an incredible <laughs> appetite for female, female pultritude. <laughs> and, uh, and who doesn't? He likes agenda. Now, it just so happens I can keep it in my pants. I have managed to do that so far in my life. And it doesn't mean that every man is perfect. 
And this guy... I've been able to. Yeah, well, you did that by, by choice. And he's not even married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gilbert hasn't taken out of his pants in like three years. Now, you have an active sex life. You oh, do. Yes. Don't, don't, I saw your girlfriend. Yes. When you were in the hospital dying. And yeah. I've heard stories uh, about uh, you, so I don't want to uh, hear from you, Gilbert. I'm, I'm dying. Uh, it's time to reevaluate. I don't know if I want to go back into stand-up what comedy. What am I doing? Uh, but, uh, <laughs> could, you, could you get me a television set? <laughs> could you what, buy me... What uh, is all this about? You, what is... Gilbert was, had an appendix attack, and right away when I was in the hospital with him at his bedside, he was, like, questioning his whole life. I said, Gilbert, you sound real stupid. If you ever get healthy again, you're going to be ridiculed. Oh, boy. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to follow Gilbert around with a camera for 24 hours, see his personal hygiene habits, his bank account, his sexual relationships? But anyway, Gilbert is a stud. He knocks off a couple of broads a week. I don't feel bad for him. <laughs> you can throw in a few bucks. Yeah. Anyway, everyone who's standing in church, including most of the guys giving the sermons, have either done a few little boys or something has gone on. So you've got to understand something. The whole church is hypocritical. Religion is hypocritical. Religion is a joke in this country. You know, no one can say it. But Jesus and Santa Claus are the same people. You know that. And I'm telling you. It's just an all, it's all a goof. It's just stuff for, it's like, we have to believe in something. It could have been a leprechaun. Instead, we called it Jesus. Or you call it, the Jews call him, I don't know, who they call him? The Jews don't even have a Jesus. Can you imagine? <laughs> Blasphemy. They just have some God. They have some God. Some <laughs> pagan God. Jackie the Joke Man God. <laughs> but it doesn't make it, this religion thing is a whole joke. Let me tell you where it should boil down to. It boils down to this. Maybe there's a God, right? It look like anybody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's sort of like me, maybe like Gilbert, yeah. <laughs> inhuman. And you really can't tell about right. it. Right. And there's all these little fairy tales that have popped up over the years. Or just you know how we let, we see a National Geographic special and we get crazy. We watch it. We see, look at those stupid cannibals. They're right. praying to a rock. Yeah, yeah. But that rock is no different than what we pray to. They look. Yeah, I mean, there was a girl in here this morning with a bunch of beads around her waist, and she said that was uh, seven healing powers, and right. she had some metal hanging off of it. And now she's protected. Meanwhile, she's shaving another lesbian while she's wearing that. <laughs> All right? So God is everywhere. Like Gilbert will take any gig. <laughs> take any, any job. God was with me on Conan O'Brien. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you something. There is a, you know, if there is a God, there is a, who can prove anything? But the, all of this superstition and nonsense that goes along with religion and Jesus and this one. But there's, no, there's not a real thing as Santa Claus, but there was a real Jesus. There isn't a real Easter Bunny, but there is a real Virgin Mary. You know, it, it, it's, all, it's all nuts. And well, the, the idea of a heterosexual priest is an oxymoron. Oh. <laughs> Nobody goes into the priesthood not uh, wanting a, a, to knock off a few babes. You don't, you don't go in there if you're, if you're attracted to women. Well, the Pope did have a message during the holiday season. He says that men and women must enter an indissoluble marriage yeah. and welcome all children they conceive, which means no birth control. Well, I'll tell you something. I, am so, I do not use birth control. No, you and the Pope are on the same side. I withdraw. I can't I am, get an erection. Well, there you yeah. go. That's your business. Yeah. No one wants to hear that. <laughs> you didn't have to make that announcement here, Gilbert. No one looked at you, is Gilbert. Is that what you're promoting today? One is coming. One is coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> Limpy Godfrey. <laughs> Robin, so uh, that wraps up those two stories. Yeah. We're going to take a break, Robin. By the way, a lot of speculation about Gilbert's sex life going on in, uh, during the commercials, Robin, since you know that story about him and I don't. Let's oh, really? Mm. Got here. Well, let me put it this way. Okay. We had him uh, having sex with a dog or he was a homo. No, it wasn't that at all. It was, was having sex with a male dog. This is the something? one thing Gilbert fears the most, yes. right? When, when someone <laughs> finds out about your personal life. Disclosure. Me? No, no, I'm very open about my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very open. <laughs> all I know is that, you know, Gilbert gives this... This impression loser impression, yeah. That he can't get a date and well, that's he doesn't have any girls. And that Reality thing. knocks off like six girls a week. Absolutely. And he's a one night stand kind of guy. Right. You know, he, he loves them and leaves them. You do. Yeah. Because yeah. Gilbert's afraid of intimacy. Yeah. He doesn't even like to take his clothes. Yeah, he doesn't like to take his clothes off. <laughs> I, I don't my have body any details you? as to whether he was. Great in the sack or anything yeah. like that, but I well, know. Well, throw it in anyway. Of one girl he knocked off. Really? Yeah. You know her personally? I've never. I did we? I think we met her. What did she look like? Was she good looking? She was a cute girl. Oh, okay. Famous person? No, not famous. 
He knocked off a girl that yeah. you know. Yeah. Wasn't Linda Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's guessing. <laughs> Did you do was, Linda Blair? Was it Goldie Hawn? <laughs> Well, it is, you know, Robin, I don't mean to break this to you, but it is show business. You know, it's Gilbert's act to say he doesn't get women. I mean, well, you know, we you know, had an episode talk. here <laughs> yeah. where we set him up on a date and he didn't want to be bothered with the girl. Because he gets and, enough on his own. And we were speculating as to why he, and this girl was a rather attractive girl. We thought it was because he was a homo. <laughs> We all, we've always thought that about you. <laughs> but I now know that he is no homo. Really? But he has problems with it's women. the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. <laughs> and Gilbert, can I ask you a serious question? Yes. Have you ever had a relationship that lasted more than a night? Uh, no. Really? <clears throat> no. What, what's that oh, all about? I, I'm like Errol Flynn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a real swashbuckler. I think Gilbert get, like, doesn't want to deal with women. Like He doesn't like them as people. Uh -huh. I drink and have sex. But he has a need for sex, like, you know, like oh, Spock. Yes, yes. Has to have sex once every seven years. That's right. <laughs> well, not that often. So, and, and what did she say? Did she say he was good? I didn't talk to the girl personally. I just know that Gilbert and she wound up back at her place. Could you tell me the name off the air? I don't know her name. Could you describe her to me off the air? Like, like would I know her from, would I have met her? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Yeah, I wouldn't know it then. Right, look at you, Gilbert. I'm looking at you yeah. with different eyes now. Oh, yeah. It's kind of turning what, what she, on. And she's going around bragging about it? Well, she did happen. See, we were talking Having sex with me is no reason to brag. Yeah, I mean, why would a girl admit to that? <laughs> and then in private, she, she was admitting she broke down. to yeah. all kinds of things. you got to teach these girls to be quiet. <laughs> you have to bury them in your mother's backyard. <laughs> you don't want them going around talking about yeah. you. You should confess to the Kennedy assassination before having sex with me. <laughs> <laughs> Norman Vincent Peale, the uh, man who wrote the book Power of Positive Thinking, has died, Howard. Good. <laughs> <laughs> he was 95 years old. I guess yeah, a couple of weeks ago he had suffered a stroke. I read that book. It was a ripoff. You didn't like it? No. All it says is, like, think positively about yourself. Stuff like that. How can I do that? My father called me a moron my whole life. <laughs> yeah, I'll overcome that. You know, like you should believe in yourself. and Right. You know, how are you supposed to do that? Oh, he didn't have any clues in there as to how you were supposed to accomplish these things, huh? Yeah, and then the whole time I'm reading the book and I'm going, I'm positive, I'm positive, I'm, pos I'm positive this book sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I read it trying to, like, improve my self-image and stuff. Uh -huh. Didn't work. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry that it didn't work for you because he sold a lot of books around the world. Yeah, because the title was so good. The Power of Positive Thinking. Because you think, oh, man, I'm going to empower myself. Yeah, it works for Did me. Did you ever read that book? Uh, yeah, but then I looked at myself naked and it just ruined everything. Right. Then you took away all your, yeah. your powerful yeah. thinking. <laughs> well, a lot of people said he helped them believe in themselves. I'm positive. <laughs> I'm so positive. It's, it's like one of those books that tell you, it was, he was the first guy to figure that out. Just, you, know, you have to think good, about, good thoughts about yourself. He is that, said he, was a t you know, he had a terrible inferiority complex. Is that how you keep yourself regular? <laughs> no, I read you it in high school positive. thinking that like, I wouldn't be such a loser when I read yeah. this book. Like, all of a sudden my life <laughs> would change. Would change. Women would find me attractive. And, I would, you know, and then like, you can't incorporate any of those things into your real life because people just laugh at you. It's just, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I, you, you would say stuff like, you know, go up to people and shake their hand firmly. It's like, hey, eat me. <laughs> now I'm getting turned on. <laughs> well, all I know is that apparently he touched a lot of people. A lot of salesmen read that book. Yeah, I read that book. Used it as their Bible. So right. at 95, after a little illness, uh, Norman Vincent Peale is no longer with us. Yeah. Simple, uh, simple rules to live by. I'll give you simple. I'll give it to you for free. Here's the simple rules you should live by. First of all, don't let anything bother you. Number two, pretend you're rich so girls will like you. <laughs> Number three, imagine you're good looking. <laughs> and then you'll live like a king. <laughs> yeah, that's how easy it is. That's, that's what the book's like. It's like, you know, just live, live life like a king. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. Meanwhile, look at you. You look like Elephant Man. <laughs> Wait. Oh. 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 I am so rich. <laughs> I feel so positive about my life. <laughs> I, women like me, and I have many, many friends. <laughs>
I feel wonderful. I'm going to this book. I'm gorgeous. <laughs> 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 this will be a tribute. I'm perfect. Howling at the moon. I'm so popular. <laughs> Women all want to have sex with me. <laughs> what else is in the news, Robin? Well, Howard Michael Jackson <laughs> continues in the news. Guilty. His lawyers are going to be back in court this they morning. Took pictures of my penis and buttocks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they were so humiliating. <laughs> Your lawyers will be back in the uh, courtroom this morning, trying to protect you from and they uh, asked for wallet size photos. <laughs> Don't you? Did you? Did you see the tape of his? Very statement? yes, very good. Didn't he look bizarre? <laughs> I I mean, wasn't that outrageous? They took pictures of my penis and buttocks and lower sections. Yeah, my 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 lower sec, my my haunches. <laughs> you know, and when that wasn't enough, they asked for more pictures. Yeah, what was funny about it was is that like, okay, they took pictures of your penis, they took pictures of your buttocks. Lower torso, yeah, including then, my penis. Yeah, and then he goes, and then my lower torso. <sighs> well, now they say, the, the lawyers say that they've heard uh, oh. Oh. word that the tabloids and so forth are out <laughs> offering big bucks. For the pictures. For the pictures. Oh, you know you're going to see those pictures. So they're going like back into <laughs> Going back into court today, Howard, yeah. to try to protect Michael Jackson from that kind of an invasion. Now they want pictures of, of Janet privacy. Latoya. <laughs> <laughs> it was so humiliating, but I did it because I got to clear my good name. <laughs> so be it. So be it. Oh, I had to suffer that humiliation. And then, <laughs> oh, it's so wrong. Do you know what one of my pictures sells for? Yeah, millions of dollars. And then they took pictures, and they took way too many pictures. <laughs> If I am guilty of anything, it is of loving little children mm. of all races, and colors, and sexes. And, and sizes. As, and as soon as I figure out what color my penis is, <laughs> I would love that too. <laughs> and my lower haunches. Did, no one has suffered humiliation like this. <laughs> no one. How about those boys you slept with? And okay. <laughs> okay, mood point. How about, yeah, how about those boys you took, you know, you, you, you took into your bed, and even though you didn't touch them, you slept with them? Maybe you didn't touch them. We don't know where. But I got no. them an ice cream afterwards. <laughs> yeah. But he is not without his support. Uh, some support nine support my penis. Some nine-year-olds from Fairfax, Virginia, a set of twins who call themselves back-to-back, -back, have written a song to show their support for Michael Jackson. <laughs> If you stay back to back, it wouldn't be a right. <laughs> You gotta stay back to back when you're with those young boys. Front to back is more like it. <laughs> is that right? There's a song now supporting Michael Jackson? Yeah, the, a portion of the <laughs> lyrics. This is dedicated to you, Michael, from all the kids are, throughout the world. We love you, Michael, 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 Michael. We're still your friend. We feel bad for you, Michael, 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 because they made you suffer humiliation. You don't have to fight anymore. Oh, Michael, we believe in you. We don't care what they say or do. We will stand by your side until the end. I'll hold you up. <laughs> never, never land. You stay there, you never, never go to jail. I was looking for your name this weekend on all the lists that were coming out, Howard. I yes. haven't seen it yet. No, my name did not make the list this year. You were year. not Times Man of the Year. No. No, I wasn't. Oh, even though I should be. <laughs> Who was the time of the year, man? Man of the Year uh, of actually the year. turned out to be four people. Uh, that uh, Axel Rose? No, the oh. guy from South Africa, I forget. The Nelson name. Mandela? Ma Nelson Mandela and the, the guy who's the president of the country of South Africa. J.W. Boda? Uh, Boda? J.F. Boda? I took a ride in a Boda. I went fishing in my Boda. I done free the Negro. Oh. <laughs> He's man of the year because he finally woke up and said, hey, I got to live. with a black man. Yeah. And then uh, Yasser Arafat and uh, whoever's leading Israel at this point. Menachem Begin? No, that's not who's leading Israel. Oh, he's not in office anymore? Isn't it, uh, who's your King? leader, uh, Gilbert Gottfried? Alan King. <laughs> Alan King. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's his name? Jan Murray. <laughs> I have to show Gilbert the Ted and Whoopi sketch that we're doing New Year's Eve. That we shot with Sherman Hemsley. Wait till you see it. He'll love it. He'll love it. <laughs> You're going to really love it. Is it Shamir at this point? Shamir Shlamazel. <laughs> Shamir, yeah, Yitzchak Shamir. Yeah. 
So anyway, those yeah. guys. They made took up, pictures uh, of my Yitchcocks. <laughs> the man of the year. And lower time. haunches. <laughs> my lower haunches uh, and my uh, discolored Yitchcocks. <laughs> Yitchcock. <laughs> And then Entertainment Weekly, of course, names uh, sort of a man of the year in entertainment. What was that? And they chose Steven Spielberg instead of you because he put out two incredible films this year, Jurassic Park and Schindler's List. No woman of the year? No. Isn't that interesting, Robin? Well, sometimes the man of the year is a woman, but not this year. (laughs) Richard Simmons. (laughs) (laughs) I miss him. Where is he? He doesn't like us know. anymore. No, he's not. Did, did anyone hear from him no. over the holidays? Hey, he doesn't even call Gary anymore. He stopped talking to Gary. Yeah. Richard Simmons took pictures of my ass and Laura Hunches. Uh, the person with the best hair this year. Like I'm it. a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> According to John Amigo. He has, has the best hair all over his body. He <laughs> <laughs> says that Susan Powder. Oh, no. Has the best hair of the year. Oh, come on. He also, is this a goof list? He also liked Lyle Lovett. That's a goof list. <laughs> that's, that's not real hair. Fabio. That's, a, that's steel wool. Fabio? Fabio uh, does have Fabio, good hair. Fabio, he said. Yes. Gilbert wishes he looked like Fabio. <laughs> Bad hair goes to Margaret Thatcher. And Gilbert. Demi yeah. Moore. And Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah he's got two haircuts, Billy Ray. He's got a short right, hair, and then he's true. got that long hair in the back. He's like Mark and Brian. That's how they cut their hair. <laughs> Mark and Brian in Los Angeles have two different haircuts. They have the long hair for weekends that they can ponytail. And then they've got the short hair. So if they, they, they hold it back, it'll look... Like they have short hair. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool. Like they're conservative <laughs> dudes. They, they look like Paul Revere and the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Featuring the- Mark Lindsay. USA uh, Today CNN most admired list. Gilbert Gottfried. Steven Edgar Spielberg, Gal probably. Pole. You got to do a sequel, like a, combine both, both the Jurassic Park and just march the dinosaurs into an oven. <laughs> <laughs> the president. Schindler's List. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Right. Tyrannosaurus. Rex. Rex, that's a Jewish name. Oh, dear. And then all the dinosaurs are extinct. <laughs> that's what caused the extinction. Pterodactyl. <laughs> Tactile Jew. <laughs> All right. The most admired list of men included Bill Clinton. Bill Dana. Followed by George Bush, Billy Graham. Bush. John Paul II. They took II, pictures of my Bush. Ross Perot, <laughs> Ronald Reagan, Colin Powell, they Rush took pictures Limbaugh. of my Powells. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, yeah, he's someone to admire. And uh, General Norman Schwarzkopf and uh, Michael Jordan. On the women's list, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Mother Teresa, Margaret Thatcher, Barbara Bush, Princess Di, Janet Reno, Oprah Winfrey, Imus. Queen Elizabeth II, <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor, Ooh. Maya Angelou. What about you, Robin? I'm not on the list come either. On. Oh, come on. Throw it in there. How dare they? Robin Quiz. Most regular woman. <laughs> <laughs> never strange. <laughs> no sweat on her brow. <laughs> you never even scrunch up your face or anything. No. Oh. <laughs> you're not ready if you're scrunching up your face. <laughs> Don't sit down if you're, if you're scrunching. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's the rule. <laughs> That's a good rule for you, Gilbert. Yeah. Yes. I want to. Oh, here's uh, something okay. for the record books. The world's oldest mom... Woman, uh, according to a British newspaper. The woman I had sex with, yes. Has just had a set of twins at mm-hmm. the age of 59. Oh, that's, that's obscene. <laughs> what, she had somebody else's uterus? Of course. She had somebody, <laughs> uh, she went to some fertility doctor in Rome, and he transplanted um, fertility, you know, those eggs from another woman, a younger woman. Into her, into her, into and her they badge. gave her these hormone pills to help her uterus get ready. And she's eighty nine, fifty nine years old. Oh, fifty nine. Yeah, she's the oldest woman uh, known to have had a live birth. Before her, it was a California woman by the age of fifty three. Yeah, that's great. That's so wrong. Her friends say that she had everything. Oof. A great job, <laughs> a luxury house, and a loving partner. The only thing she didn't have was a child, and she thought she had missed the boat. She went to some doctors in England, and they thought it would be too much of a strain of for her to go through uh, childbirth and uh, pregnancy. God is saying you're too old. Nature is saying you are too old to have a baby. This is not right what these doctors are doing. They're like Frankenstein. If you got a strain, you're not ready, they That's say. You're not yes. kidding. You're 59 years old. You know, you know what? By the time the kid is breastfeeding, she'll be on life support. <laughs> 
do you realize that 10 years old, this mother is going to be near 70? She's going to be 69 years old. 69. Ah. Your, your favorite. Yes. <laughs> what is it, Baba Booey? How dare you interrupt? Well, you know, you know, Robin was doing that story before about the two nine-year-olds. They uh -huh. did the song for Michael Jackson. I just opened the mail. It's oh, you have And it. there's a CD. Oh, oh wonderful. Great. Let's hear Michael Jackson's song. That's important. Very good work, uh, Baba Booey. Monkey. Oh! I can open the mail better than anyone. <laughs> Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your Gary impression? <laughs> I, got, I got it in the mail. <laughs> These are two young black boys who uh, made this. Uh, made this. Uh, I see their picture on the Twins, CD. Twins, but uh, back to back. <laughs> took pictures of my lower haunches. This <laughs> is dedicated to you, Michael, from all the kids around the world. Uh-oh. <laughs> what, are they uh, trying to get an invitation? Oh. Turn over. <laughs> Your genitals are black and they're also white. <laughs> Let's get nude and sleep together tonight. <laughs> oh boy. That was good. <laughs> well, uh, guilty or innocent, uh, I say the evidence looks... I mean, there is no real hardcore evidence that has been submitted to me, but from what I hear, I don't know. I, I see something improper was going on there. But uh, that's just my opinion. Those little kids don't think so. Well, the little kids haven't been up to uh, Never Never Land. <laughs> <laughs> never Never Land. You'll never have your pants on again. <laughs> <laughs> this is a land where you be free of clothes. <laughs> This is never wear clothes, Land. Yeah, they, they abbreviate it in the press, but you see, hey, Michael, I thought this was called Neverland. No, no, never wear your clothes, Land. See, look at that sign up there. <laughs> well, I, you didn't know because they never say it in the press. We could call it whatever we want. Even though my ass looks like a Dalmatian, that's why I can't. That's why I got. That's why I gotta keep my clothes on. But you can be free of those horrible I look like restraints. Petey. I look like Petey from the Little Rascals in my pants. Yeah. <laughs> but you'll be free of restraint now because you don't have to wear clothes. It's so good. Welcome to Lower Honchland in Russia over the week. I won't let you go till you take pictures of my lower haunches. Russia is like some, never, uh, never land. Kidnappers, four kidnappers, <laughs> took some kids and. Some I like kids people. and I like to nap with them. Please <laughs> <laughs> <you> stop. <laughs> you call me a kidnapper. Go ahead. Took some kids and some adults hostage over the weekend and uh, kept asking for different things, including $10 million. So finally, the, so, the Russian government came up with $10 million. Oh, yeah. Ransom money, got all the hostages freed, and then they finally uh, captured the four kidnappers and recovered uh, the money. Hmm. So I guess now, and maybe we didn't hear about these kind of things going on in Russia when the Soviet Union was in existence, because we always thought that they were immune to this kind of thing. But yeah, I thought they were crime free. Yeah, not not true. Say, Robin. So you Howard, you, you bought the the hype. It wasn't true though. That's right, I did. Yeah, I did. I did. I do. They were Russian. They were Russian to take pictures of my ass. <laughs> did you see that <laughs> in page six today, they say there's some uh, disquiet among the Beach Boys. Uh, Mike Love is suing Brian Wilson. And Brian Wilson doesn't know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> nice guy. Mike Love says that uh, he's very upset about being portrayed as a violent sex crazed fiend in uh, the book wouldn't it be nice oh, really? Brian Wilson's autobiography he also says that he's not been given credit for co-authoring 79 songs <laughs> the Beach Boys wrote well he might have a legitimate claim there well, uh, one of his detractors says that Mike Love is trying to rewrite history now that most of the major players who were involved at the time are dead and can't tell the story. <laughs> no. In fact, Stephen Gaines, who was the author of the book The Beach Boys, Heroes and Villains, says Mike Love's name is ironic because there's nothing loving about him. Oh, <laughs> we know the guy. We love him. <laughs> 
One of his, uh, I guess his first wife, accused him of beating her. Yeah, but she didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> After having caught her smoking. That's all she did. Yeah. Well, listen. <laughs> she says, and he beat her up. Yeah. It smells up the house is right. <laughs> they did the theme song to Problem Child. Did they? Little trivia. <laughs> yeah. Thanks no, for really? sharing that with Sorry. us. Sorry. <laughs> the one movie Gilbert's in. Yeah. yeah, he's plugging himself. Yeah. yeah, right. So I guess they'll have to fight it out in court a little longer. And uh, this is a little bit of good news, however, that Brian Gilbert's Wilson... leaving? Yeah. <laughs> Brian Wilson recaptured publishing rights for the music he produced between 1962 and 1966. You'll remember that's the catalog that his father sold. How do you get it back? After Wilson was in, uh, you know, had that nervous breakdown. And he had to have really sex with Michael Jackson. To make a decision at that point. I guess they fought it out in court and said Brian Wilson never would have given permission. But he was in such a bad state that he didn't know what was going on. Oh, so he got his uh, rights back to yeah. the uh, publishing. Yeah. In fact, uh, he got something like a $10 million settlement. Wow. As a result of all that. So, so <laughs> nice. That should buy a lot of straight jackets. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of sand for that yeah. sandbox. <laughs> you know, Anna Nicole Smith, she's uh, the Playmate of the Year for 1993. Yeah. She's in the paper, or at page six anyway, reports today that... Uh, she did the theme song to Aladdin. No. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, she posed nude in the magazine, of course, and she didn't know really who her father was, and I guess he didn't know who she was. Yeah, she never so met her father. She finally met up with him. She said she'd been looking all over for him, and then once they met, her father just started gushing and saying he had seen her nude pictures. <laughs> oh, so, God. <laughs> I guess Daddy had a little fun <laughs> with <Whoa>. his daughter. <laughs> While That's he was shock. looking at those pictures and not and didn't even know it. Oh. I didn't know you'd grow up to be such a piece of ass. I would have stayed with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of interesting that your mm. father uh, has those thoughts about you after seeing you nude and Well, you didn't know, in all fairness to the man, Robin. Yeah, well, you ought to stay with your kids. But now he's more turned on. Right, that's a more of a turn <laughs> <laughs> And Soul Asylum's David Perner is moving to New York. Oh, good. He's living with me. <laughs> Gilbert needs a roommate. His rent is too much. <laughs> he says he's not very happy about it because the prices in the Big Apple are so high. He says, I'm used to paying about $200 for rent. Now I'll have to pay 2000 I want to know where he's going to live for that. Yeah, where are you going to get a place for 2000 <laughs> That's what I want to know. He's going to be living in a closet. You should move in with Gilbert. Gilbert's on <laughs> rent control. <laughs> Aren't you? You have a rent control apartment. Yeah, I'll have a... Uh, and he could stay under my fold-out chair. Right. <laughs> the grave of Marlena Dietrich was uh, desecrated oh, 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 in Berlin, Howard. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Falling in love again. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> they desecrated it and covered it in excrement. Yeah, that was Gilbert. <laughs> I, I was ready. You're saying people went to the grave of Marlena Daytrick? Yes. And, and, went to the, and, and smeared excrement all over her grave? That's right. Why would they do that, Robin? Uh, well, there is speculation. She wasn't very popular in Germany because she came to the United States and was working here. And uh, during the war, during the Hitler regime, she was offered to return to Germany. And she refused because she didn't agree with the Nazis, I guess, about their politics. Picky, picky, picky. So in 1960, when she visited... Germany, she was um, picketed you mean by people who were angry at her for not supporting the Germany during the war. Uh, boy, those Germans. They're a wacky group. They're not to be trusted. <laughs> Falling in, in love, love again. again. <laughs> love again. To <laughs> what am I to do? Can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> the words fur-wearing slut. They took pictures of my fur-wearing <laughs> sluts who were daubed in red paint. Oh, my. By the unidentified vandals. Well, she must have been spinning in her grave. <laughs> <laughs> she died in May of last year and was buried in her native Berlin after a career that began in pre-Hitler Germany and flourished in the United States. Well, if life is anything like Tales from the Crypt, those people will suffer. <laughs> because there's always retribution for doing stuff like that. You don't smear excrement on people's graves. Well, occasionally, but... Well, you do. But on holidays... <laughs> you always wait for Christmas. So, but but other than that, the Germans are very upset about what they did during the Holocaust. Falling <laughs> <laughs> uh, in love again. again. Never wanted to. 
<laughs> I see in the paper today it's uh, a year since we learned the name Katie Beers, the little girl who was abducted when she was on her way to some video arcade by a wacky neighbor who imprisoned her in a bunker he had built below his house. <sighs> Yeah, he, had, he had a Never Never Land in his back of his house. Right, and uh, he finally led police to I that. I took pictures of Katie's beard. Bunker after she'd been <laughs> closed in it for some time. Not a long time, but some time. She was then taken away from her hellish life. She had been living sort of like a street urchin. That's the result of being passed around by family members and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now she's living with a loving foster family, they say, and is turning into quite a nice little young girl. She's even made the honor roll in school. Wow. Turning your life around, Robin. That's right, Howard. But her mother is still suing the uh, county for permanent custody of, her, custody of her daughter. Let's hope she never gets it. It's amazing to me how people can never tell what's best for their children. Well, let's hope she grows up in a nice, normal family and somehow gets to date Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've got a little room in my basement. Now are you? <laughs> Why do people keep little cells in their basement? <laughs> is it to keep little girls from getting out? Hey. What else is in the... Uh... Are you celebrating Kwanzaa? Yes. I haven't gotten tired of uh, Christmas yet. He took Kwanzaa. pictures of my Kwanzaa. Oh, stop. <laughs> Kwanzaa, we're in the second day, I think, of Kwanzaa. Yes, my we are. Kwanzaa and lower hunches. <laughs> uh, African-American holiday celebration. Yes, it is. Kwanzaa. I would like to get me some Kwanzaa. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Are you celebrating Kwanzaa? Hey, can you please show me our big Kwanzaa? Now, what do that have to do with the Africans? <laughs> well, it was started in the 60s by someone who yeah. thought that blacks needed to recognize their own culture, uh, indulge in a little self-love and right. uh, I indulge in self-love every night. And unity. So now, what do it mean? I don't know what the word means. I just told you what they... I, somebody probably made it up. Is that African? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. All you white people don't know what Kwanzaa means. You don't respect the... I don't think that caught on, that idea. Why don't they conform to our society? Why do they all have to be into Kwanzaa? Why do they want the Kwanzaa? Who do they think they are? Kinta Kinte? Now, is anybody suffering from the holiday blues? Gilbert. Yes. Even before the holiday. He's been depressed all year. Yes. Good <laughs> cure is to watch our pay-per-view New Year's Eve. <laughs> and I'll be on Conan O'Brien New Year's Eve and up all night. Who cares? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and the Beach Boys did the problem child theme. Right. <laughs> Anything else, Robin? I think uh, that is it for me today. I'm kind of worn out, so I don't want to sit here and talk to Gilbert. <laughs> oh. I think we're done with him, right? Gilbert, uh, obviously, congratulations are in order for your successful career and your up all night television show. Oh, yes. And, of course, your Conan appearances. That'll your, be on New Year's. And what else? Conan O'Brien on New Year's. Oh, and right. up all night on New, New Year's. Year's. Everything's New Year's. Yeah, then, well, after that, I have no career. <laughs> then it's going to be the Aladdin cartoon. I don't know when. And oh, New so Year's. you're going to be uh, doing the voice of that parrot for the cartoon? Oh, yeah. Uh, what is no, that I'll voice? be doing the princess. What is the voice? Oh, it's much different. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same as your regular Gilbert voice, right? Yeah. I'll be on Herman's head sometime this year. I don't oh, know yeah? when. Did you shoot it already? Yeah. Oh. How'd that work out? Do you, do you get everything done in one take, or do you have to do a lot of takes? Uh, no, I'm just a professional. No, really, seriously. Well, you... when do you go out? Do you Are you there three to five days before they do the actual shoot? It's usually about a week. Yeah? Yeah. No. And you go out there, and you rehearse, and... Uh... And there I am. Right. Well, I'm very good for you, Gilbert. i just like to point out to Gilbert, I do it all in one day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you did what, Jim McCauley? <laughs> the Fresh Prince. The Schwarzer yeah. Show. The Schwarzer Show. The Schwarzer Show. show. <laughs> <laughs> I think th those funny Schwarzers. <laughs> there are a lot of black shows, you know, that, yes. uh, that are on TV now. That's You've never done any of the black oh, shows. He, I he did, did yes. the Bill Cosby show. Cosby, and the I did. The first black show. And you did the Eddie Murphy movie. Yeah. Yep. And I did two episodes of uh, Different World. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. all the black shows. Oh, so you're on a lot. Did you ever score with a black woman on any of these shows? I never scored with a white woman. Well. But, oh, oh, and I did. Oh, and I, I'm also in uh, House Party 3. I did a part. Oh, yeah, but that's another black movie. Yeah. You didn't know Gilbert was black. Blacks, you know what? Black <laughs> guys who black guys who do movies like they to have like Gilbert, Gilbert on because they need a goofy white guy. <laughs> you know, someone who looks stupid. He'd yeah. be a goofy white man. Look at him. We're better than him. <laughs> who would the one white man we could catch that is be better? Right? That's, is you play the goofy white yeah. guy. 
You're an embarrassment to the white women. <laughs> All right, Gilbert Godfrey. I think it's the one guy that can get more white women than. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank Gilbert for coming on. Also, uh, Jackie Jokeman Martling is going to be making several appearances. Is that right? Jackie Platinum Joke Page Martling to order Jackie's <laughs> new comedy CD, The Joke Man Cometh. <laughs> Taped live at the Philadelphia Funny Bone. Call 516-922-WINE. Remember, 922-WINE is just a regular call. Let's enjoy some of the CD. That's a killer, isn't it? It's a good album. I'd listen to it. Yeah, sometimes you just have to let it go. All right, very good, Jack. Congratulations. I guess Gilbert's going to get this out. Oh, he loves it.